Okay. I showed you earlier how to save a setup file, and I hope you remember how to do that. It's pretty intuitive. It's under the file menu. So uh, you just start that exercise with file key. Once you've saved a binary waveform or a setup data file, it's the same exercise, really. You're saying, I want to save a file. I want to save this type of file, setup file, or waveform file, or image file. And then I want to save it to this source. And that's the thing you have to do with the thumb drive, is tell it, save it to the USB thumb drive. So we did this exercise earlier. And I showed you two different ways to do how to save the uh, setup file. And uh, loading the file is almost exactly the same steps, except except you're going to come in here and highlight the file, and then just pre press load exec. And it'll ask you, it'll say, are you sure? And you'll say, yes, OK. And it will load this file properly for you. So here's the steps, how to load a set file. We saved a binary waveform earlier. This is the same steps. I showed you, first of all, how to do a save menu, one button save, which, as you found out, the first time you use it, you have to hit several buttons. But from that point forward, after you have set it up properly, you really only set, press one button, and that's the save button. File button, it always requires several keystrokes or buttons, but it also is more powerful. It gives you more options and more choices as you save your acquired uh, waveform. We also loaded a binary file earlier. And um, in this exercise here, we actually first save the file. And then on this exercise, you're going to load and view the waveform. So if you have a file on your USB thumb drive, the extension, the last three letters, will be .wdf dot whiskey delta fox and uh, in about six keystrokes you can select and um, reload that file back to the screen so once it reloads to the screen you can now do cursor measurements parametric measurements things like that all over again hard drive recorder mode uh, this is a uh, this is an upgrade if, if you're ever interested this is especially good for uh, very long, very long recordings, like a week, or two weeks, or a month. If you think you'll ever do, uh, you know, 30-day recordings, uh, you, you'll want to get this feature added. And all it is is a hard drive, an internal hard drive. Once you have the internal hard drive, you'll have this feature here automatically. Okay, so this is an exercise for real-time recording. When we say real-time recording, we mean hard drive recording. This can be puzzling because you may be thinking, well, I always want to save my acquisition to the hard drive. And of course you can. You can always do that. You'll have to do it manually, or you can do it with action on trigger. So when you, when you hear us say real-time recording, you should just think hard drive recording. This is optimized to be a very long, and slow uh, recording. So we have about three more slides, and then we can talk about maybe another exercise. We went through history where I showed you acquisition number zero was the very last acquisition. Acquisition minus one was the previous acquisition. Acquisition number two was was the one before that, and so on. In this case, I've got 238, uh, a total of 240 acquisitions. There's some other very powerful features in here. I can look at one record at a time. I, I can look at all records on the screen simultaneously. All 240 of these waveforms can be displayed. I can also average them. I can average 240 acquisitions and make them into one acquisition. One nice thing about history is you get one microsecond resolution time stamps of the trigger time. So this can help you locate events and what time they occurred. 
here's all records being displayed simultaneously. So in this case, I've got 240 acquisitions uh, or, or some large number of acquisitions on the screen at the same time. It could be, you know, 2,000 acquisitions. History does have a very powerful search mode. So I've drawn this little box right here. It's hard to see, but inside that sine wave, I can tell the DL850 to find all of the acquisitions uh, in history. Again, this is a history feature. Find all of the acquisitions where this box had some segment of waveform in it. I can also search all of the history waveforms by parameter, peak to peak. I can tell it to find all of the waveforms in history that had small peak to peak measurements as one example. 